Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play project of a game that I find extremely underrated. Yep, indeed it is Sonic the Hedgehog Spinball, a game released for the Sega Mega Drive way back in 1993, as well as um, also, you know, the Sega Genesis things, but I'm playing the Mega Drive version because I'm from the UK, so it makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, this game... I find is pretty underrated of things. A lot of people tend to see this game as, you know, the bad a Sonic game or so in like the early days and things, because some people find this game, you know, too short or too hard in places, or you know, sometimes they just say the control suck and things. Uh, I would follow that, but fortunately I am one of these people that actually likes it, and I have a lot to say about it in this LP, to be honest of things. And I'm actually doing this through post-commentary, post -commentary since it's Sonic the Hedgehog, isn't it? I mean, even when I did Sonic Advance 2, like, way back in 2013, bloody hell, that's a long time ago. That was through post-commentary because it's Sonic, he runs too fast for me to freaking dork at the same time, you know? Too fast for the naked eye. <laughs> but still. Sonic Spinball is basically, it is a pinball game, but the thing that makes it quite innov innovative or something if you ask me, or at least just unique in a way for it to be a pinball game, is the fact that it has like some sort of story and plot involved. Usually in most pinball games, you know, it's just, uh, you bounce all over the place, and you just, um, you get a whole bunch of points and that's it really, that's, that's your main objective, to get the highest score in the game and that's it. The thing that makes Sonic Spinball different is that it actually has good level design and bosses thrown in and that in a pinball game if you ask me is really cool but the problem is like a lot of people who played this probably when they first played this you know like for the first time and things they just thought oh, it's alright I guess but you know because they, they never realised that there are like bosses and extra things in this game and that they just thought it was just you know just this one a pinball area and that where you just try and get the high score but no there was a lot more to it in things like as you can see right now and things where at least it happened earlier you know I had to hit those switches in order to drain something in order to get the emerald and in each area what happens is you work your way all the way to the top and things by collecting a certain amount of emeralds I think in most of them it's four but then it becomes six or something in the later ones also I don't know what the frickin' hell happened there. <laughs> That's not usually supposed to happen. You're supposed to go around three times hitting those like crocodiles so that way it unlocks the door but of course glitches happen. And this isn't done on an emulator, this is done on an original Sega Mega Drive itself. <laughs> so that's a natural proper copy of the game back in 1993. Which is yeah, somewhat confusing things but still. But um, back to what I was saying. You basically collect these whole bunch of emeralds which unlock the boss room, then you make your way to the top where the boss room is, so that way you can take on the boss and basically just clear the level and things like that. Some interesting trivia I found out about the game actually is this. A lot of people, even though they don't like the game, they love the soundtrack, a good thing too, as Sonic Spinball's soundtrack is awesome. And you want to know why it's awesome? Because it's actually composed by the same guy who made, you know, the soundtrack to, say, um, Comic Zone, uh, what, what else was there, The Ooze, and even, actually, I think he sort of composed parts of the music for Sonic and Knuckles, I believe, and that guy, who is a legend if you ask me, and deserves way more credit, is Howard Drossin. He's the one that made the soundtrack to this game, and it is freaking incredible. Which makes sense as well, because like when you play games like Comic Zone, like, another <laughs> underrated like uh, Sega Mega Drive game, or at least not underrated, just unpopular, I suppose, deserves way more appreciation of things. Uh, some of the sound effects I notice when you play Comic Zone are taken from Sonic Spinball, therefore you know it's proof that you know it's by Howard Drossin and things. I also find it wicked um, how Howard Drossin um, uh, is probably pronounced Drossin or something, I don't know, but. Um, I find it cool how, in, in like Comic Zone and things, how a drossing, you know, was the was the voice to Sketch Turner, the main hero in the game. So even though the guy made the music, he also did some voice work as well, which I think is freaking awesome and things. There's no voice work in this though, apart from the laugh, I think. But I don't know who does the laugh since it's so distorted in this. You'll hear it when you die or something. 
in Sonic Spinball, which I don't know when that will be and stuff since it's been a while since I've recorded this footage. This was back in, like, what, January I've recorded this footage? Because, <laughs> uh, you know, it's just sometimes I... It's a game that I feel like playing, sometimes it isn't. Also, the physics are really weird in this bit, but still. You've really got to, like, search your way around the levels, though, in order to find out what you're doing and things. Because, like, you know, um, you might spend a bit of a while. Also, wow, I very nearly died there. I don't know how I survived that. Usually, I'll go right into the acid and die, but I guess luck just happened right there. But still, never mind. You have to basically just look around the levels, though, finding out how to get these emeralds and things. And that's what I like the most about this Bimble game, to be honest with things. Like, it's not just bounce on these bunch of flippers and hit points and, you know, just get the highest score possible before you run out of balls. No, you can't actually die in this game and things, and it involves exploring, looking around, trying to find things and all that. And also, this boss here is very, very easy, not to mention it has a really awesome soundtrack to the bosses as well and things. And a very, I mean, yeah, exactly, that scream right there, but, I don't know, <laughs> sort of ear grating, I suppose, but still. What we're going to see, though, is perhaps probably one of the most over-the-top ways I've seen anything die in a game ever. If you hit uh, four of those switches, though, rocks come down, it hits it if you want. But now, witness this, the most over-the-top death to any boss I have heard ever. Freaking chaos, you know, just hearing those explosions, things go all over the place, and the screen even shakes. This is on the Mega Drive, don't forget. This is not through editing, this is how the game actually plays when you play it on an original Mega Drive system, you know? I know, I just find that so over the top and things, but still. And every time you clear a boss fight and things, and bosses are each, you know, you defeat them in different ways and things, you get given these bonus mini games, which. Pretty much, like, just if you clear them, they give you an extra ball and things like that, you know, they appear every time you've uh, cleared one of the pinball stages, and I am terrible <laughs> at these ones. To be honest, I'm not really the best at Sonic Spinball. The way I'm doing this, though, um, I don't think anybody can be the best at Sonic Spinball, given the fact that, you know, it's basically pinball. Anything can happen, like, the ball just does whatever the freaking hell it wants and things. But... I actually have a flaw with this. I like the idea of these bits, you know, like the minigames and things, but the thing that just ruins it. And sure, I mean, I suppose it's pinball. This is what would happen in reality, but this is this is a video game, god damn it. It doesn't have to simulate reality all the time. It's mainly, um, when you get to moments like this, I have one capsule left, alright? All I needed to do was hit that capsule like a couple more times and then hit Dr. Robotnik and that's it, he'll be done for. And uh, that's it pretty much. Uh, the thing would be clear, but I if what happens is basically when you hit the ball and stuff, it just it, it bounces all over the place and things. But it occasionally falls dead center down. So that no matter how many how, how much times you know you've moved the flippers and things you're not going to hit it or anything like that. Yeah, that right there, I just wasn't really paying attention to things, but still. You know, it's just sometimes it can just fall dead in center and things, and... It, it's just a, a bit of a cheap loss of a ball, if you ask me, because, you know, you can't do anything about it. It's just something that happens with the game and things. And that's why, um, half the time, I can't really do these. In fact, I don't remember um, how much of them I cleared in this, actually, since it's been a while, like I said, since I've recorded this and things. But still, I mean, look at this, I, I, I'm just trying to hit it, like, in the corner of things, but, you know, sometimes Dr. Robotnik, like, moves in the way and stuff like that. I'm not saying it's terrible, it is fun, but, like, when, it's not fun when it basically, you can't get the ball at all, you know? I, I feel like the flippers and that are spaced out a little bit too much, because the ball can just, you can't get it, you know? And things, because, um, when you hit, like, the capsule and you hit Dr. Robotnik, what happens is he basically falls out and things. Like that, see? But anyway, that's the end of this episode, and I'll see you guys in the next one.